Now we go into six star. Six star. Everyone, everyone loves the six star. So because they picked it, we get the the good side on this, which is uh, which is DJ side. This side is the preferred because you just get to the point quicker. This is an insane <laughs> break off from AG. His <laughs> checkout, checkout off the break. It might be jail time, but he's trying to he's trying to really catch him off guard. But they actually don't send anyone middle. This is a really weird break off from LAT. Usually at least send, you know, you send like one or two middle. Two, two on the outer sides is kind of crazy. Because especially against Ant, Ant's going to take this space away from them. So he gets a kill. He stays alive. Blue, they have to worry about him. But because they have, look at their arrows. Because they have to worry about Ant, both of them are looking this way. We can now have free access through white to break on Ant. Now they're going to turn around, but again, it's it's instead of us getting spawn kills, we're now getting space here, and also gets a kill blue, we can break back on in. That's why I don't personally like going zero people blue off the break. Because if you realize that, you can just take advantage of it very, very easily. Brandy gets killed on hill. They teamwork the guy blue, or sorry, they teamwork the guy poolside. We just don't get any kills here. We need to get at least one of these so we can work off of it. Not great, but move on to the rotation. Ants already working his way towards blue. I keep saying blue. I mean pool, pool. He's working his way towards pool. He gets caught out for it. We can't get anything going towards, uh, you know, old P1. Now they're pushed up. Front pool stairs on P1. We have to, we are, have a, a trek to go on to get to the P2. But sometimes that's, that's a blessing in a side, disguise. You take so much space that, you know, you might not be able to help each other out. And we spawn right next to each other. They can try and push up, but we also have some space to work with, and it can already push through vents. Gets a kill on hill. We get the kill on this other guy towards front pool. Now we're holding from uh, from the front side. But once again, you're still winning the trade battle because you're spawning a lot closer. So this is this is still a good hold at LAT, just because they solidified the good spawns from that old P1. Do you think the breakoff has a domino effect for the rest of the game? Uh, sometimes. Not for the whole rest of the game, but for, you know, maybe the next two hills for sure. It depends on how hard you win it. We're just winning gunfights at all. Trying to make it as mixy as possible, but maintaining new spawns. That's, that's the big thing. So... Off spawn, we're covering mid, we're covering the right push. We know they're probably going to push through front now too, so... We're just making sure that we, we solidify these spawns here. Good play by Ant, he gets a two-piece. This is a good play by, by Ken. Staying alive, backing up, knowing that Ant has your help here. And, and even, you know, Ken had a backup regardless anyway to help out onto the hill. So he trusts Ant to get that two-piece. We're still spawning close, but they're breaking from the front here. This is not great. They're just, they're hopping on top. Ant's holding the, the spawners, but he actually gets killed for it too. That's just, that's just, I don't know who died in hill. I think it was Brandon. Yeah, Brandon just needs to stay alive here. He gets wall banged by Dan, but if he stays alive on time, it just buys a lot more time for you know AG or Ken both to help him out here. Some of that pressure, but look at the mid-map cut. It's Shotzi with a massive play to tear down. 
half of the front line of LA Thieves and two back to spawn, but then you win the two on two towards the point. So Shotzi does that on one side, the teammates can't pick it up on the yeah, other. Yeah, that's just it. I mean, you do so much, but you lose hill control. Just through the so that just stems for everything. They're now having, the you know, they're, they're having like such an easy time getting pushed up because of the kills they were getting and we're spawning in the back still. They can go up to blue. They're watching from the wood stairs. They're still holding time. Eventually, we're going to spawn out because this guy pushes through. Because this guy spawns here, they know there's still one guy in the back and that they're spawning out too. That's the, this is like the emergency spawn, I guess you can call it. So because he knows that our guy spawned out P2, he trusts these guys to teamwork this guy in the back. He can now play cutoff kills. So we're in a pretty bad position here. But we still break from the front. Who was that, Ken? Ken was an insane one. Now we get all the kills. We break from the front this time. So that's a, I mean, that's a good 25 that we just got there that we wouldn't have had otherwise. We get kills off this white time. Now we can beat them to new as well. So that's, I mean, that's massive. Ken's pushed up in this corner here. They actually read him. Wow, jo Jodeci's actually read him there. AG goes to check out again. Brandon wins the gunfight at Joe on the, the trade. AG should win this. Now 2v2. They're both looking for AG because he's checkout. Because AG buys time staying alive down here, it opens this up free for Ken. Look at both of them looking at this. Just working off each other. Good teamwork. Now they focus their attention to Ken because he gets a kill. What do you know? AG activates. He gets the kill on number five. You're constantly working off each other. But that, that comes with playing together a lot. That comes with chemistry, trust in each other. Knowing each other is going to make the right play like that. Those are, those are some really good plays. Some really good teamwork plays. Look at, the, like, look at, look at this. AG gets a kill here. He leaves, goes to help time, and he knows that Ken is behind him and can take care of this. This number five guy is going to keep being worried about AG, that he's not going to be expecting another guy, Ken, here, like this. Or actually, he does, but it's still weird because he has to, like, overextend. Look how Ken's playing this. I mean, Ken is just like, all right, you don't want to chow this? I don't need to chow it. We're on time. Now I get a free kill. Still trade battles. We're still winning them. Now Ant can look mid. Another kill. Huge hold. We were really good at this P4. Towards like the end of the year. And was it what did I say before? P4 to P1 is such a huge change. Just getting getting to here early was was so important if you were holding that old time. Because it's right there. You're you're literally just taking two steps uh, towards that direction. And it can be a really easy hold if you hold it well. Oh, I thought Ann was going to get those kills. They do break on him uh, going double plat like that. AG does get a kill on time though. And it looks like Ken is, is playing for this guy poolside. Gets the kill. AG gets another kill. Massive plays. Because this is still 48 seconds. It's a huge P1 hold. Look at, look at Ken getting the space, bro. He's going all the way to P2. But... Even though he dies, he knows that they're going to start pushing poolside. He can just relay that to, to Brandon. Brandon can watch the pool stairs. We're chilling. He dies off time. Ant's waiting for someone to activate through blue. Gets a kill. Ken was the last guy to die. He can now refill the time. Brandon will spawn up and now works his way to the hill. Kremp actually really gets a, a nice two-piece there. So they're still battling and making Mixie. I don't... We shouldn't have got two-piece here. I think Kremp just makes a play. Yeah. Kremp just makes a good play. Once again, what do, what do you know? 
Ant making plays through blue to be a nuisance on the LAT side. Look at the arrows, bro. Instead of being pushed up, spawn killing, like technically here, five could have gone over here, started spawning killing here. Number seven could have looked from time down through white. It could have a guy DJ as well. But now all of them are focused on trying to kill Ant. What does this do? It opens up space for the rest of these guys to come off spawn. Now he gets one, he ends up dying, but look at the space that these guys now are able to get rather than just getting spawn killed. I don't think people talk about this enough. You, you make space, you make chaos around the other side of the map and you completely fuck over the enemy team's mindset because now they have to look for you. And Ant is probably the best player in the league at doing that. Now look at this. Free break. Now instead of being fucked over for the, the next P2, we have the old time. We get another kill on these guys challenging up the pool stairs and we can just cut to new. We can cut to the front side. We see this guy pool, just fucking run at him. AG gets the kill. Look at Ant. Kremp gives it up for one second. Ant's already taking the space through vent. We break. Last guy live vent. Just fucking run at him. Yep. Now you're holding the front. Insta break. You realize that one play over here, even though he just gets one for one, how much space it ends up creating for everyone else. And now we break the, the old time P1. They start like, you know, I don't know, pushing through, trying to get space towards pool stairs to kill us off old. And we just, we break through. Perfect. Now you have a perfect position. You have someone at the drop watching the cross. If they, you know, first come down the drop, you have the kills. Or you relay over to Kenny over here. He's going to be watching towels. So if they cross over to towels, you, you relay it to him. Number four is watching the vent. Off this spawn, number two. He can play blue if he wants. Make this guy not have to watch the vent anymore. You can like double towels or something. Five seconds left around P1. Yeah, I mean, both P2s That's what happens. You see this? Unfortunately, he gives it up so right, you know, at the wrong time because this guy still hits the vent anyway. But, you know, Ant probably is like, oh, I, I have your blue, give it up. But it's that one millisecond where this guy takes that timing to go vent because Brandon is now watching drop. Or he actually, instead of him going and watching towels, he covers drop. Um, AG shifts the towels to watch it with Ken. So unfortunately, this guy still hits the vent, but it was a good play nonetheless. You're, it was just that one millisecond timing that kind of fucks us over. Like, the, if that doesn't happen, we're, we're still holding from the front. Regardless, like, Ant still stays alive and still makes it mixy. But it could have been so much better for us. But that's just a, you know, bang-bang timing. They try to push towards, towards pool to get to new. We just completely deny it. We start hitting through front side old because we can. Free chows for us. We're still going to spawn the back. Now you, we have our we have our our hold set up. Number one, watching back curve. Number two, watching white. Half wall, watching front and pool stairs. Everything's covered. If anyone needs help, they can start adjusting to each other. I think Ant either hears them or sees attack or something. I don't remember. So he can call out to Brandon that he's going to probably eventually need help. AG is watching the front now. So, you know, Brandon gives that up. You still have Ken watching the back curve. Ant gets this guy weak. Doesn't get the kill, unfortunately. Or sorry, did I say... You? Okay, no, it was Brandon that stayed front. And AG was the one who moved backwards. Now you just adjust. Adjust to the pressure, you get the trades. You're chilling. We're, we're chilling. 40 seconds still. We're spawning the back. We know they're going to be fast hopping this wall. Now you just watch the wall. Unfortunately, he didn't have time to you know throw a trophy because he was aiming the wall. So we don't have a trophy on hill. Keep contesting. Unfortunately, we don't, we don't win those. The, the, the space for them... 
getting up to the, the stairs was just too strong. And he gets two for it. One with the nade. I think if, if, if Ken throws this trophy, if he had time to, we we probably just win this hill because he would have stayed alive from the nade. So this, this is the decision you got to make. You either completely chalk the 30 seconds or you hit old, get them off old, and then get over to new. Um, it's a hard decision because you don't want to, if you completely chalk old, you give them the 30 seconds to take the lead and you're also having to play tight and you, you're giving them all the space to work with. They can hit through old, they can hit through mid, they want to take a route this way, they can come from all angles. So it's, it's kind of difficult. So I think these guys, they want to just try and bang old, maybe see if they can get a kill, but it, yeah, it's, it's a hard decision. But what happens here now, because they push through and push through white, we still had two guys that spawned up, but we also now have two guys that spawn deep. So it makes it a, a weird scenario for them because they have to worry to be worried about multiple things now. They're back and they're front. And we can break on, on in to the new. Now off of this spawn, we know they're spawning deep. We knew this guy was still on old and can play for this guy at old. We got to play good on time though. Or now Ant gives it up. He can allow AG to play the back. He can get over to time with number one. And, and Brandon is taking this space towards office. This is good because you want to take as much space if you can. Uh, so they, they have to be worried about multiple different angles and stuff. So AG plays the guy off old. That's huge kill. Now we just have to worry worried about our U and, and our office, basically. You can still look at it because in case this guy, U, took this route and went this way. That's why he still has to carry it, but... Most of the time, they're just going to come you. Still holding it strong. This guy's going to come through you. Look at the, the positioning by AG. Oh, you don't see it on the screen, but he's he's on our side stage. And this guy doesn't kill him because he's, he's able to move instantly to behind the statue. That's why he doesn't get the kill. He actually works with Ant to get this kill on the stairs, and now they can focus this guy you. Good, like, little... Micro position. He's he's 77 health. You see, so him just moving in front of the statue, not being able to kill, get killed. That's that's another thing. If if you're if you're watching, if you're on time watching something, you just got to be aware of the angles that you're you could be shot from. So I mean, that's just a small thing, but him dying there is huge, or not dying there is huge. Still, once again, Ken is always banging this U to help out you. And has already taken progression towards their, you know, their bottom drop. Just being a nuisance. Look at this. Gets a kill office. They don't know what the fuck to do here at this point. They have to clear Ant. But he is just finessing, dude. Insane. He's even going to take the time to go push their base on this rotation. But we spawn here, so we know that they spawn... They spawn out white. Big kills by Joe Deceives. That's a big two piece. Ken just ran him. Oh my god. Joe Deceives weak. He nays their side time, then challenges his side you. Two piece. Fucking clean. They double child pull stairs. Unfortunately, Ken and, and Dan are able to get the best of them in there. But look at that. Look at the route he takes, dude. It's not like he spawned P4 and just took this route. He spawns deep like them and, and, and decides to take the longer route. Decides to take the long route, gets benefited with a two-piece. Almost a third, but, you know, Nasty gets him. But again, what is the alternative? If he had just taken the route pool or just taken a route mid, they'd probably shit on us and they still have two guys left alive and they're just soaking and it's just impossible for us. But now they're not even on time. Ken takes a right a route now. He gets pushed up. Again, they're still not getting any time for this. Look at this. Just huge. 
We're just opening things up for each other. Now we're in a position, we're holding old. We know that they're going to go pool. It's 214 to 162. We know they're going to try and, and rotate to get front, uh, front side P2 here. 100%. Because we don't see them, I mean, we don't see them coming white. So you just know. Yeah, we're watching just in case they spawn like P4 or one, one of the guys is taking this type of route. That's why it, AG's watching it. But we know that they're going to come pool at this point. Basically. Look at this. <laughs> and even tries pushing to get this kill. Do you realize like how insane this is? If he get, wins this kill, we just win the game outright because then he's now fighting through P3. He probably spawns them out over here, but then he gets these kills or like at least makes them worry and it sets them up for number three and number four to get kills as well. They start spawning over here. We start holding from the front. That's what he's trying to do here. But he ended up losing the gunfight anyway, but that's what he that's what he was like attempting to do, which is insane. But. Again, still maintaining pressure uh, like towards this P1, making sure that they don't have a clean break setup. If you can stagger them, get front pressure. It's a uh, it's perfect. Look, look at Ken being annoying here. P1. They can't give him up. Because if they were to give him up, or they could, they could give him up, but he's going to know. So, like, they could give him up, and they can hit front P2, but again, number two's playing a credit. You have number three here as well. If, he's, if he realizes they're not pushing him, he's going to push himself. And now three of them are going to be trying to break from the front. He knows he can trust his teammates to buy some time for him, because they're not just going to go, you know, three front and all of us and just instantly die. You know, that's insane. He's, he knows that he's good for at least a little bit of time, and then he can just activate and get some kills. But, you know, Dan wins again fun anyway. So this is, this is good out of Dan. Like, they still played for him. He's, like, Ken's expecting them to just hit through front, but Dan still plays for him. So that's big. Look at this. Look how trolly this is. He's trying to kill him through the water. AG holding strong in the hill as well. They just 2v4 basically. Well, they 2v4, but we're coming off spawn anyway. So it's not like it's not like a real 2v4. We come off spawn and we can clean it up because we're, we're so close to the spawn. Now we push up. Make them take chalice before getting to the hill because we're going to win in 10 seconds. They can't just run through the hill. Ken stays alive. Towels, that's that's great. AG picks up the trade. We just play it super well. Honestly, those those P4s were the difference, man. Those P4s won us that game. We were we were soaking those P4s. The way they played that was really, really good. Like really good. Really good job. Again, that was just our most comfortable map. Uh, basically the entire year so big bounce back six star uh now we go to a game five